Cecilia. I'm Laura. This is the Yarn Meters Podcast. Yay! I think we do that every time. Yeah. And this is the Yarn Meters Podcast. Yay! It's because we're <laughs> That's our I'm Cecilia. And this is the Yarn Muse Podcast. It is. Episode whatever. I don't know. 38. I have no idea. Hey, I did notice though that even though I spent a lot of time editing that video last week, I uploaded the unedited version. So, yeah. Oh, well, maybe I should just not edit ever. And maybe. you can just have chaos. That live, uncut version. You could. <laughs> It would save me a lot of time, but... Except for then we wouldn't have the little helpful things in there either. Yeah, like the names of the patterns we're working on and the names of the yarn and uh, all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, well. So, anyway, now you know what it looks like before I get to the editing process. Yes. I didn't even realize it until, like, last Friday. It's Monday, two weeks after we filmed, so about, you know... 12 days after we, um, I actually posted it. <sighs> Didn't even realize it until Friday. I was like, what? Or maybe it was even Saturday. I don't know. Whatever day I texted you. Yeah. <sighs> it's sad. It's sad. It's very sad. Yeah. Anyway, so here we are again. He came back. And this will be our last one for a while because Laura's having the surgeries. And, unless, you know, Cecilia and Shelly decide to film one on their own and maybe and get Charles to edit it and all that kind of stuff. But maybe. Or we'll see. or I was trying I was thinking that maybe Cecilia could come to my house and we could film one there. I could do I just that. Don't know how the editing would go. With <laughs> one arm? With my with my left hand and not having um I think I got. I, I need to get a, a Bluetooth mouse or a mouse that has. You know, I don't have Bluetooth on my computer here. Mm-hmm. I have a mouse here, but it's a um, gun grip mouse for my right it's hand. A I got it because I have problems sometimes with my wrist, which hopefully will go away with my shoulder so. yeah. um, re repair. But. Um, so I was thinking if I could get one of those, uh, a Bluetooth mouse, but with the little adapter that goes into the USB that mm -hmm. allows it to Bluetooth with my computer, that then I could use it at home with my laptop at home and then here, you know, as long as I remember to bring both the pieces here. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a thing. Afterwards. Remembering. Yeah. So. Always exciting. I don't know. I have one. I used to have one at home. Who knows if it still works? I haven't used yeah. it in years. So, you know, the battery's been sitting on it for a long time. So, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But, anyways, maybe I'll. One of the mysteries of the world. Maybe tomorrow I'll go buy a, a mouse just just in case. Yeah. Because so. there's nothing more fun than buying a mouse. It's one of the best things. Buying a live mouse would be kind of more fun, I think, yeah. personally. But. I don't think so. And Not I hope my sister-in-law Kristen's to, not watching because the feet of the snake. Oh, stop it! My sister-in-law Kristen is deathly afraid of mice. Really? Yes. Well, we we've I don't like we've stopped them, teasing se, teasing her about it. That's like good. That's really mean. Buying little mice gifts to give her and that. Yeah, we stopped doing that. <clears throat> probably should have never people. started probably doing never, that. Probably never because that's really mean, honestly. Yeah. You and I wouldn't yeah. do that, and I'm pretty mean. Well, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Too late now. Too late now. Damage is done. Except we've stopped. So at least we're not making it any worse. Oh, yeah. Although God. we do have lots of fun behind her back. <laughs> well, when she's not around going, oh, glad Kristen's not here. <laughs> <laughs> well, my sister's that way with birds. All birds. Really? Yeah, she's terrified of birds. Uh, one time we were out at the Renaissance Festival and there were just birds flying around. I mean, they weren't doing anything. They were just birds. She's like, oh my God, look, those birds are going to get us. I'm like, 
dude, they are not going to get you. They Did she watch birds as a small child? And Well, no, here's what happened. As a little kid, she had all this blonde, you know, fine, fuzzy hair all over the place because she wouldn't ever comb it properly. And the older kid, you know, my older siblings, older than her even, um, because they're all older than me, these four are all older than me, um, they would tease her that the birds were gonna nest Build in her nest. hair. Yeah, yeah. And we lived on a farm, so there were barn swallows, which, of course, barn swallows, when they go into the barn, which is, hence the name, they swoop down to, you know, get through the door. Right. So they get really low. And so she was terrified of these barn swallows, not mm. just transferred to all birds. And, and I will say, when I went to London, birds don't bother me, which is good because London's full of them. And they're full of pigeons. It's yes. pigeons, you know. And so I had sent her this postcard of Trafalgar Square, which I don't know how they get rid of the pigeons to take the postcard picture. <laughs> I don't know. Because there were zero in the picture. <laughs> when you're there, there's a thousand of them right. all, all covering all the things. And I mentioned the thing they don't show you here in this picture is all the pigeons. And then I told about how we were sitting at a chip stand in the park and there were pigeons going from the roof of the chip stand to the ground back yeah. and forth, flying back and forth and people sitting outside because it was a beautiful day. And there was this guy sitting at one of the tables and I'm watching these pigeons flying around and there was a midair collision. These two pigeons, one going down, one coming up, ran into each oh, other funny. and then bounced off each other. And one of them hit this dude in the head. He got hit in the head of this pigeon. He was just like, he had like long hair just, and just kept studying. I'm like, <laughs> wow, I guess that's a thing here. You just randomly get hit that's in the head with funny. pigeons. But I told her that, and she said, that was the most horrifying thing I ever heard. <laughs> well, she probably wouldn't want to go to Katoomba in um, Australia because when I was there with my daughter, they have wild cockatoos flying around, and one of the cockatoos landed on the table right next to us and grabbed something from the table. I can't remember if it was a sugar packet or food that was on the yeah. table, and then flew off again. And the people at the table were like, <laughs> you know yeah no but they were would, so cool looking <laughs> she was she would scream her her head off so yeah. no no i i just had to do that though because it was so funny that this guy was just like whatever i'm so cool yeah <laughs> you know, he was like a student you know uh, that's funny <laughs> you know? that's good well so are you done with that henny shawl yet almost i have got only 10 rows left i would have finished it yesterday if i hadn't felt so crappy so Cecilia felt crappy after her run. I did. I felt crappy, so I just went home and I showered and I sat around watching football games I didn't care about and kind of dozing in and out. Yeah, because no Vikings came no. yesterday. Vikings run Thursday. Yeah, and they won. They did win. It was very exciting. Well, at the end it wasn't exciting because I dozed off with that one too because late game and now I'm old and, you know, past 9.30 is crapshoot whether I'll be awake or not. Oh my god, I stayed <laughs> up until 2 a.m. on Saturday. Why? Well, my daughter, thanks a bunch, Emily, got me hooked on this Japanese reality show. Oh, Laura. It's called Terrace House. And it's it's kind of like, like now, I've never watched Big Brother, but like it's like Big Brother, Brother yeah. where six people move in they're all youngish and apparently the theme of the show is to find love or something i don't know <laughs> um but uh it, so maybe it's, it's more interesting like bachelorette in paradise or whatever? maybe i have no idea um you know it's all in japanese with subtitles yeah so first of all not getting much knitting done while i'm watching this no. getting some but not much um and then, you know, so they're interacting and then they have this panel of not judges, but just panel of commentators. <laughs> yeah, because you would, you know. And it's, that's almost as fun as watching. The first time I saw this, it's like, this is just lame. And then Emily wanted to watch another episode. I'm like, oh, fine. And then, of course, then you get was, hooked into the characters, yeah. you know, and yeah, yeah. so I, I, in the past week, I've probably watched 10 or more episodes. Oh my God. So I, I should say since Wednesday of last since week. Since Wednesday of last Yeah, it's really bad. It's bad. And then I think about it outside of the show. Oh, 
Well, you know, whatever. It's just bad. <laughs> but but I will say what I should do is not watch any more until my surgery, and then yeah. I can just binge through all of yeah. them because I'll be yeah, save them lying up. around. Yeah, and this is like you know the eighth season or something, so I have plenty oh, of seasons that I can go back to. Go to. <laughs> yeah, oh. How awesome! Is I know, that? isn't that great? That is fabulous. I had my whole, you know, whole list of things that I wanted to watch planned and out. Now, now it's going to be side railed. Waste it with the Japanese terrace house. Show. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Charles, who knows me and loves me well, recorded last month. They were having a little thing of on Turner Classic Movies, which I adore. Uh, they were having a little retrospective of Toho Studios works, which I know you're not going to know who this is. I have no idea. <laughs> once I say, Toho Studios did the Godzilla movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so, sure. Even though it's not, doesn't they didn't play they pro the They probably did that one with the gigantic ants, too. That creeped me out when I was a kid or a teenager or whatever. I don't know. Because insects, creepy crawly things, yeah. No. I, I Snakes, know. I'm okay with. But anyway, so I've got a whole bunch of them. And of course, it's Turner Classic Movies, so they're all in Japanese, where they're supposed to be. Right. And, um, but then, again, I, like you, I can't always knit and read. I mean, luckily, they're monster movies, so, <laughs> you know. There's a lot of dialogue in this terrace house, but yeah. there's probably not as much dialogue in Yeah, I mean, there's Godzilla some. And so. there, there is some, because you have to discuss, you know, that at some point... Godzilla goes from being a bad guy into being, you know, a good guy, and then you're fighting various monsters, and, you know. Yeah. And there's the weird little twins who control Mothra, and, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Mothra. Mothra. They sing this bizarre little song about <laughs> being sad, and if only Mothra would come and help them out, and, oh, <laughs> and, and it's just strange little twins are like this high. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's just weird. It's Japanese. It's, yeah, you know, it is. They, they've got lots of different stuff. Anyway, they're they're the the Godzilla movies I love because it's you know the guy in the suits, guys in the suits, you know, wrestling, and you think how much how hard that must have been because they're in water a lot of times, and they're in these rubber suits, and they're you know throwing each other <sighs> around. I mean, it's yay for Gojira. <laughs> is that is the, pron the pronunci correct pronunciation? Gojira. Yeah. I wish I could say, and I'm sure you feel the same way about <clears throat> about these Japanese things. I wish I could say I'm learning a bunch of Japanese, but I'm not really. No. Although no, the I translation don't. for hmm is yeah. yeah. <laughs> like okay. You know, That's what I what I've learned from translations is that it's not always, you know, just because there is no equivalent in English right. kind Absolutely. of thing. Well, and so hmm some could be equivalent. They could just write hmm but they yeah. write yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe that's because that's the the contextual yeah, yeah thing. That's what they people say when they mean you know? yeah or equivalent of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't ever say that for yeah, but I don't either. But I mean, I guess maybe they do in Japan. So. Maybe could be. Yeah. I do. I do kind of feel like I do like how they when they say they're sorry, they go like this or something like yeah. that, and I think that's kind of kind of nice to you know kind of put a little submission in there at the same time well you know what i mean <laughs> that i mean that's yeah. a submissive some sub, yeah submissive gesture right um to kind of put an exclamation mark after the mm -hmm. i'm sorry kind of thing yeah. yeah but anywho so i've got a uh, i'm working on a sock for my daughter finally got it cast on i know i was having problems with that last time and it's and I actually have the colorway that I originally bought for her now. That's good. Which is boring material pants. <sighs> Look at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
you know, it, it's okay. It's it's not love them. terribly boring, but it's kind of eh. it's kind of boring. But at least it's stripey. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. I can't wait till it gets to the next non-color. I don't know what the <laughs> non-color will be. But. The next tanny browny blue yeah. color. And I just have, um, so I started out making socks with the Nancy Lindberg um, Knit to Fit Socks mm -hmm. pattern. And it's just kind of in my head now, so I just do that one. That's good. There are lots of other cool sock patterns out there. And, you know, maybe I'll do a different toe on this one than I typically do. I don't know, but I probably won't. I probably, probably end up doing just what I do. Probably be somewhere out and about and be like, oh, I don't have yeah. anything to look up on right. the toe, and so I'll just do this exactly. One. Speaking of out and about, if you're out and about and you pull from the center of your ball and you mm -hmm. are carrying your yarn in a in your purse or something, these things are great. These are um, skein coats, and you stick your wound up ball inside there so they don't fall apart like. Um, I don't, I don't have one in process. Well, this one's in, in process and yeah. it's getting kind of, it's starting to get in a little messy. Yeah. So that would be good for a skein coat. Yes. Um, They're really nice. Yeah. And I, I recently got one and I was like, yeah, whatever. But then I used it. I'm like, you know what? These really kind of are great. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a hardcore center. I uh, saw so my hard, I don't. hardcore. I only pull from the center. Yeah. Unless like, I had a um, a little tiny skein of um, ball of this, mm -hmm. and I just grabbed it on my bag, and I saw the end, and I I Stuck. started knitting with it, and then I realized, ah, that's the outside of the ball. I hate yeah. that. And the reason I hate it now, you know, I'll tell you, people are either pull from the center or pull from the outside. There's no, oh, sometimes I do it this way, no. and sometimes I do it that way. It's one or the other. And the thing that people don't like about pull from the inside is what we're, what this is to fix yeah is that the ball collapses and it gets messy yeah they also you know if you don't wind it if you don't grab the um the end when you're winding it and it gets lost inside then it can get kind of messy pulling from the inside um but that's just at the very beginning i know I mean, it doesn't it doesn't me, bother it's like me. you got to pull out all that crap and you want to use yeah. but the thing i don't like stuff. about pulling from the outside is it that the ball then rolls around? Yeah. In which case you need a yarn bowl. Well, you don't have to, but you need something. You need yeah. something, and that just annoys the heck out of me yeah. for it to be rolling all over the place. Ugh, yeah, I don't like it. But and, you know, that's just me. Yeah. And I don't hold it against anybody that they no. want to pull from the outside. No. You go for it. Yeah. I like Whatever the inside. Makes you happy. Yeah. But anyway, these are come in lots of different um, designs. Here's some little. Cats. I like those kittens. That one's called Hello Kitty. Let me find the one that I really like. Oh well, Cecilia probably likes this one too. This little skull. I do. Look how sweet they are. And I really like. I like this one. I want to see if I've got little owls. Oh. Aren't they cute with their little hand knit scarves? They're all bundled up for winter. Yeah. So anyway, we got lots of different designs and all sorts of fun things. Yeah. There's some that are just pattern, not with animals. Just right. Only show only like, animals did I stuff. only show animals? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like oh, this one yeah. too. That one's kind of cool. Yeah. That one's called Concrete Jungle. I like that one. Yeah. So, anywho, there's. Let's see. There was another one in here. That one's cute. Mm -hmm. That one's called Henna. Nice florally one. Yeah. So lots of I lots of uh, different styles that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. So and they would make great <clears throat> gifts for oh my someone gosh. in your life who, you know, pulls from the center and you yeah. want to make their life just a little bit easier. You know, I have to show them also and then we have to get up to do this. I have to show you the project bags that came from the same company. Yeah. At least one of them. Oh so yeah. She's coming back. Okay. Here. here it goes. Ready? Ready, Ready for this? Very exciting. Ta -da! Ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are 12 year old boys. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I just think that one's hilarious. <laughs>
Uh, so oh. I'm gonna have to get one of those eventually. Yes. So. And then we got also from them. No, this is from a different company. This is a different company. Well, in a similar vein, cups. This is the one for me because I have done this. It me says, too. A question asked while I'm counting stitches will be answered with louder counting. And it is funny because sometimes Charles will just start jabber, 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 and I'll be like, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> and then finally he'll get us like, oh, are you counting? He's like, no, I'm just randomly. I'll Same numbers. numbers. <laughs> and introverted, but willing to discuss knitting. And then it has a great, like, yarn ball. That one went back. home with me. And yes. One of those went home with me this weekend. Yes. Because, yeah. Because introverted, but she's willing to discuss knitting. I'm willing to discuss other things too. You know, it's funny because I was I was taking a picture of this mm -hmm. for Instagram, and um, Shane said, "How come there aren't extroverted ones?" And I said, "I don't know. They just did introverted ones." I said, "One of these is going home with me." She goes, "You're an introvert," and I was like, mm. "How do you not know that?" I I don't know. Because she is so extra. She is so She extra, does extra, not yeah. understand at all. She doesn't. And yeah. She's great, but there are times where she's like, but you just go do this. I'm like, like <laughs> we'll race. And she's like, why aren't you saying hi to everybody? I'm like, I, I don't know any of these people. Why would I be saying hi to them? And she's like, well, hey, hi. You can do it. And she's, she's great. She cheers everybody oh, on. And she's fabulous, but... It's she like, said to me, yeah, that's not me, man. So we were talking about me being an introvert. Yeah. I said, oh, yeah, I just I hate going to parties. She goes, why? And I said, I really hate small talk. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. She goes, you just make shit up. And I, was like, <laughs> I cannot do that. I get, I'm talking one-on-one -on -one to somebody, and then I'm, my brain is going, what should I say next? I don't, I don't know what to say next. Maybe they'll say something. I don't know. And then I got nothing. Yeah. You know, my brain is not going to go, well, hey, I went to China the other day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> make something up. I mean, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> so, no. She said, that's the best part of parties. It's just making stuff up. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well. Yeah, no. I'm, yay. <laughs> I, I am not. I don't go to parties either usually. And yeah. When I do, I try really hard because now I got knitting so hopefully I, I just bring that with me and hope that there's at least one other person who knits who we can discuss knitting because otherwise yeah I don't I don't yeah but there are certain say. parties that I get invited to I mean I granted I don't go to any parties anymore I just say yeah. nah I'm not gonna um <clears throat> but there are certain places where knitting is probably not yeah but gonna happen. you know what not that it's... I don't get invited to many parties, yeah. so I kind of figure. But I do have my board meeting later this week, and I will be knitting at that. And these socks will be great for that. It will be perfect for that. Yes. Because you can knit on those and yeah. not have to think too much. I'm also working on this shawl. This is called the Op Art Shawl. That's nice. And I'm doing it out of Malabrigo, Verano. I've only got the plain color section done so far. I'm supposed to start uh, the um, second Perfect. color, which color. Is this one. Yay. But I'm trying to decide if I need to start over, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. I'm using size seven needles. Okay. I did a swatch on size six because that's what the pattern called for. Um, <clears throat> and. It was quite, a, and it blocked it and everything. Quite a few stitches less per inch. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least one or one and a half, maybe even two stitches. I can't remember because mm -hmm. I didn't write it down. And so I went up to a size seven. I didn't do a ne another swatch because I figured it'd still be a little bit under their mm -hmm. gauge with the next size up needle. But 100% cotton and garter stitch not mm -hmm. it's not all garter stitch it's garter stitch and lace i mean you can, and some stockinette right i'm just trying to decide if i should and it's 
a total of five skeins. Now I don't think I'd use up the um, the fourth and fifth skein completely, but so it's going to be a little heavy. Yeah. Is this cotton? Yes, it's cotton, cotton cashmere. Oh, but it's got the cashmere on it. See, yeah, this is 100% like like a little bit. But that's going to help it from yeah. stretching out as much. So I'm just trying to decide, would it be better to start over on the size six? It'll be a heavy shawl with the garter edging. Will it stretch too much? Mm. But I'm, I think I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'm under their gauge anyway. When you did your swatch, did you hang it up to see how much it would stretch? I, I don't remember because I did it a long time ago mm -hmm. because um, originally I was going to make one project out of it and that didn't work out and then I was going to make another so I did a second swatch and stock a net and then that one didn't work out and so this is my third choice and I just don't remember if I hung it or not. Maybe. I mean it doesn't look bad right no, now. I think it looks pretty good though. I mean and I suppose, I mean, generally with the shawl, you're kind of wrapping it around yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you're not. So you think I'm okay? I think you're okay. I wouldn't go down. I think it might get too tight and you lose some of the... The openness of yeah. the lacy bits. Yeah. The old shale pattern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the next row will be purple and then it's every other row is, is um, the other color. Or every, every two rows you change colors. And it's got a... Um, I cord applied I cord edge so the as you're moving it up the side it gets hidden Ooh. in the I cord which is kind of cool that is cool I like that that's a good plan yeah way to have a good plan designer who made that yes whose name I can't remember right now woohoo you did a good job <laughs> shout out <laughs> to <laughs> no name it's <laughs> to random yeah designer yeah so that's what that's what I got going on working on lately right and I um, did not wear any hand-sewn stuff today I did wear this little crocheted sweater thingy that I not sweater kind of a vesty thing that I made a long time ago and I can't remember the name of it but you know I'll try to find it and put it up on the <laughs> Did you put screen. it in your Ravelry? Oh yeah, I mean I know yeah. I can find it. <clears throat> so that's why the Ravelry thing is so great. Put it all your is. projects in there. It I is. love that. So Julie, my business partner, sent me a um, instant message yesterday asking asking if I knew about this website website knitting space. And I is that the the site that started after the whole Ravelry thing no earlier idea. in the year i, I know idea. another site it. well it started in, this website started in 2019 and it has a bunch of patterns on it could be i think probably it's whatever started after the whole ravelry thing yeah um but man they've got a lot of of non-related ads on it you know mm -hmm. how some sites have just a ton of ads yeah i really don't like that i don't either it's annoying it is annoying so, oh, hey, uh, shout out to Freeze Babies Fiber Fro Frolic. She gave us a shout out on her podcast. Yay, Freeze Babies yeah. Fiber Frolic. So I, and her name is Cindy. Cindy. I, I um, just wanted to repay the favor. I watched her podcast the other day. Now, I don't know if she has different types of podcasts. So I only had time to watch one. And this one was a, um, a live podcast podcast basically I mean it's, mm -hmm. you can watch it later but it's live when she's filming she's it and she it. yeah she's streaming it and she's um she has people commenting in and so she answers their comments oh, and stuff like yeah. that so yeah yeah sometimes Dan TDM does that so yeah hence the reason I know about it the only YouTuber I watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, so anyway that was nice of her I appreciate yes. that um, and if you have a podcast, any of you viewers that you would like us to give a shout out to, we're happy to do that. Yeah. 
For so sure. Let us know. Um, so you got a lot of publications over there to I show do, people. I do because all the all the books came in and all the magazines. And yeah, I've been ordering a lot of books and magazines lately. What can I say? You know, it seems like all the specialty magazines that uh, that are not um, like you're about to show piecework. This is something that we get automatically. Yes. But all of the specialty ones that we have to order, you know, in advance, um, they all seem to come out at the same time, I suppose, fall. Mm -hmm. but yeah. So I actually subscribe to Piecework. I used to. I love it. I love the articles. Just like, you know, people read Playboy for the articles. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to show this one off. I think this is really cool. It's, she designed a tam um, based off of the big window, the rose window yeah, that was called I don't know. in Notre Dame. I have no idea. Well, I thought you would have been there. I've been there, but yeah, back in the 80s. Yes. But yeah, I think maybe it is rose window. window. Yeah. So I think it's kind of cool, and I would probably use a lighter base than she used because that it does seems look a little so thick, dark. Kind of oh, you mean lighter in color? Lighter yeah. in color, yeah. Because I think that would be nice. But it's made out of elemental effects, so... Oh, nice. Shetland fingering. Yes, so it is fabulous, and I might have to make that. And so there's always a lot of interesting things in here. And They have an article about Hapsula lace and the different types that they do there. There's traditional, and then there's rebellious, which I love that. There's some <laughs> rebellious. rebellious lace. That's great. So it's a good article, and then they did this. This is the, it's actually like a circular shawl hooked together. So it's like kind of a cowl thing, but not exactly because it has that bandana type of shaping. So I think this is a particularly good if, issue, and they always have other things in there in case you do multiple fibery things. But this one has a lot of nice knitting things in it. Can I see that for a second? Sure. I kind of like this little, um needle or sewing case on, mm -hmm. on the front. That's kind of cute. And that would be easy enough to do if you were... Oh, sure, if you, you know. like embroidery and stuff, because there's mm -hmm. a lot of embroidery on that. Yeah, embroidery is easy. Embroidery was the only thing it's I learned It's called a housewife, a by the way. This this thingy is called a housewife, because it says, stitch a housewife, and they don't mean a person. No. Although I don't think it's going to do all the housewifey things that you might need. I don't know. I don't have a housewife. Yeah. Have you have a house husband. I do have a house husband. And then we also got this. I, I've got a, I've got a cleaning lady. She does have a cleaning that comes lady. comes in twice a week. Yes. Twice a week? I thought she I mean, once a week. Sorry. Twice a month. Oh. Every other week. I wish she came sick. twice a week. Actually, I don't. Because, you don't, because you, you know what? From her. As an introvert, I don't want to be there when she's there. She always says, oh, the cleaning lady's there today, so I have to stay late. <laughs> I do. Okay. I, do. I mean, You're weird. Marianne's great. I just don't want to be there when she's there. Well, anyway, this is Jordan Vick's Big Book of Christmas Knits. You can make all your Christmas things, stockings and pigs and hats and all the things you need for Christmas. Little sweaters for your loved ones. You know. You know. In Iceland, yes, it is traditional that the day after Christmas is the day the Yule Cat shows up. The Yule Cat? The Yule Cat. Interesting. And the Yule Cat will eat any children do that do not wear their brand new hand knits. <laughs> I, I love like, that. I'm like, Yule Cat all the way. So, oh my gosh, I love that. So, we, should, we should do a... Uh, I think we should do a Yule Cat. We should do something... Too. Here at the store, mm -hmm. I don't know what it would be. I don't know either, but oh my god, that's Iceland. hilarious! They're the best. I love it. And I have this one. I actually have this in the hardcover. Eat for knitting all your balls. One year, I it, knit nine of them. Carry them in your ball sack. Ball sack, and then you're you're good. I made nine of them one year, and that was a lot. But it's once you get going on them, they are all you know they're constructed the same. Yeah, just. You know, and I filled mine with roving. Oh, I actually nice. filled it with alpaca roving. So nice. they were very light and lovely. Yeah. And because I had it in my home, because that's how I roll. I have weird crap. 
And then we got these um, from little tiny booklet things from Susan B. Anderson. We got and we're back. So we had a little technical issue. Sorry we about thought that. we were filming for the last yeah, 10 or like so minutes. minutes. Because a phone call came in on my phone, which is what we're filming with. Mm -hmm. And here comes your husband walking up to the door. With lunch. And um, anywho, it apparently stopped the recording. So we're going to try to pick up where we are. Cecilia's husband is here for lunch. I have an employee coming in 45 minutes for um, for some training, new employee. So we're gonna try to wrap this up in the next mm, 10 or 15 minutes. Yes. So talk fast. All right. So I was discussing uh, Mary, Millie, and Morgan. Maybe I already discussed it. I don't know what all I said. You got dolls, they got clothes everything you need this is like book one to start and then so that millie and mary and morgan have somebody to hang out with you got ben and buddy buddy yeah buddy and um so you can have them date you could have them have babies maybe i don't know <laughs> whatever Susan you like B. anderson is, has such great designs I she just, does she and they're very clear and concise i've i've knit some of her toys and they go well this is my favorite one though string along toys and you can make these and they hold hands you can make a bunting as i said earlier which you didn't hear you can make a necklace which how fun would that be you know it'd be a it would be a statement piece that's for sure we also have another book by her called kindred spirits which is just baby clothes. yes very yes cute too. and also some little sweater mugs that you know mug sweaters that actually look you know like sweaters for yeah. your not for this type of mug, probably, but for a to-go cup. Yeah, you know, it's a great gift. No, actually, I think it is for this type of mug. Can you put it's it on got that the too? handle? Oh, in well, the picture. Cool. So. Then you could do it for that too, or you could just do it for to-go to mugs. To-go, yeah. whatever you drink out of, whatever yeah. makes you happy. And then this is another one of the new magazines called Making Stories. It has some. It's issue two, loving and caring. It has some articles it also has some great sweaters let me find the sweater we all love um now before i just turned right to oh i love these socks they're dk weight um where is the sweater really okay never mind it's a great sweater it's a cute little kid sweater oh, oh here's here the is. kids and the adults here version. we go kids and adults so you can mix and match you can look good together <coughs> sorry I just really like that. And then we have the knitting pattern holders that we just got in, brand new. Um, this is your more normal sized one for just regular kind of eight by 11 pieces of paper. So, you know, you can keep track of where you are. And this one is like a big ginormous one. I'll hold it back so you can see it's big. I was thinking um, how great it would be if you were doing like sometimes they have like the lace patterns with the charts and they're so small. You blow it up and then you can use this because yep. they both have the little magnet thing that goes across to keep track of your, you which can see it there, on. which roll you're on and they're pretty slick. And I did find that um because I do have one similar to this at home that sometimes you can actually even like right on there with like a dry erase. Oh, nice. Because it's yeah. a plastic. And so if you're... You can make little notes or whatever if you have to. And so that's a thing too. Or maybe Very if you're nice. like me, I, I need to highlight my cables because I don't know, I just remember back from front. Do you wanna, looking at them. You wanna show those other two books over there? I, oh, and, your, I, and the piecework? I did show those, I think. Oh, did we? I think so. Okay, all right, well. We well, if not, I'll show them next time. Yeah, Because I thought okay. I did the toys at the end. I can't remember. Well, I well, we, I do have a couple of books, though, too. Here, so. so we got Vanishing Fleece by Claire Parks, who um, has written a couple of other books. If you want any information on fibers, she is the person to go to. She has uh, the Big Book of Yarn, Knitter's Big Book of Yarn, and Knitter's Big Book of Wool, which are great references. She also does the Knitter's Review uh, website, and she will swatch um, 
new yarns and talk about them and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but this book is um, talking about making yarn from sheep to skein and it's a year long journey and she talks about um, the plight of the small farmer, rancher, that type of thing. <clears throat> it's supposed to be very good. I haven't read it yet. <clears throat> and then we have a crochet stitch dictionary, which is really nice. And the great thing about this is that not only does it give the written instructions, but it also gives the diagram. Uh, and I was saying when we were filming this a minute ago, I don't think as many people use the diagrams, the crocheters use the diagrams yeah. as knitters do, but they're a great visual. If you're a visual yeah. person, then they're a great way to yeah. kind of picture how you're how it's supposed to look at the yeah. end. So exactly. if it doesn't look like that, then you know <clears throat> right. there's an issue. Yeah. But and then we were gonna talk about um, our trunk show that we have in, which is created for you by Laura. Not this, Not Laura. this Laura. A different Laura. There's a there is actually another Laura in Ohio. What? Who knew? Who knew there's more yeah. than one? Um, and so she's got we've got three of her yarns. This one's called Sassy Stash. And this is a merino nylon blend fingering weight or sock weight yeah and is this what this one's made out of do um, you know this one is the crystal stash oh that's this yarn so i've got a few of those and that is um merino tinsel mm -hmm. so that's why it's got some nice sheen, sheen and stuff and it's beautiful yeah, it's really pretty. And then she's got a tweed version, which is called Naughty Stash. All of them have stash at the end. Yes. It's so you can increase your stash. Yes. So I like I, I like tweed yarns. I think they're fun. They are fun. Yeah. You have the little bitties in there. I think this is a pretty, really pretty purple. That's a beautiful purple. Yeah. That's why I grabbed it. So. Because purple. Beautiful. And that truck shows here through, through November 4th. Okay, so a couple weeks. Yeah. So come well, on no, in. no, another week. Another week. Yeah. So come on in and Sunday. buy some. Through Sunday. Through Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> it's not here quite as long. So November 3rd. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, come on in and get some. Yeah. Oh, and you know what we should do also before we finish? <laughs> well, we're really getting through this fast. It took us like 15 minutes and we're at like seven minutes now. So we're moving well you missed all the good you know, stuff Cecilia's lunch is here so yeah, it is important it is um, I got soup our winner last podcast for the prize which was some pirouette from Barocco and a mm -hmm. Barocco pattern book um was Melissa Gurney so congratulations Yay, Melissa. Melissa I'll uh I'll we'll make a comment you on your yeah. on your thing we'll and I can't know. remember if you're here if you're elsewhere but we'll let you know either yeah. to pick it up in store or we'll mail it to you yeah either way um and next month or next week the prize is this cute little zipper pouch felted wool mm -hmm. and a skein of um eyb yarns tenderfoot it is a 75 merino 25 polyamide fingering weight so it's great beautiful. for socks or a shawl let's see how many yards 410 yards so oh. you get to get a small shawl out of this for sure so that's what we're giving away next time. And as always, all you have to do is make a comment on make our YouTube comments. page yeah. and uh, you'll be entered in the drawing. Yes. And we're happy you <clears throat> anyone comments comment because you came in the shops. The lady from Montana was here yeah. last week and yeah. she made a comment about how much fun she had. Yeah. And her best friend from elementary school yeah. lives here it's and they crazy. just out. Oot in a boot. Oot, oot in a boot. If they were from Canada, they'd say oot in a boot or something. I don't know. Yeah, they grew up in Wisconsin. Same thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they think it's the same thing. Yeah, same. Whatever. <laughs> they got hockey and cheese. I think it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you're funny. Um, anything else we need to talk about right away other than... Uh, we don't have any events coming up other than our uh, first Thursday yarn tasting, which will be next Thursday, the 7th, yep. uh, 10 a.m. to noon, and again at 6 to 8 p.m. So um, come on by. I'll I don't know which yarn uh, we'll be tasting, but I'll have to figure out that out this week so we can yeah. get that prepped. Because we'll be. Yeah, done. I'll be in pain yeah. on Thursday. Yeah. Um, or. We're heavily not. medicated. <laughs> one of the two. Yeah. Kind of like one. now. 
it's and then different. the only other thing that's coming up is Small Business Saturday. So, uh, you know, we're not open on Thanksgiving, obviously. And a couple of years ago, we decided not to be open on Black Friday Yay. either. So, that makes um, me happy yeah. inside. Well, that's because she likes to shop. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. But we'll be here on Small Business Saturday, and that's when we do all of our, our fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, mark your calendars for that. There'll be deals and, and all the things. And, and special. Who knows? Who knows what we're going to do? Special we're giveaway and items. Gals. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's about it. All um, right. Have a great day. A uh, couple of weeks, and mm -hmm. maybe we'll see you in a couple of weeks if Cecilia comes up to my house and films, maybe. or if Shelly and Cecilia decide to maybe. to try it. I can get Shelly to do it. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. It'll probably be a short one with Shelly. Yeah, but so. we'll we'll figure it out. Just subscribe, and then you'll know when when the next one's when the out. next one comes up. And yeah. if nothing else, we'll see you in December. Yep, because we'll be here then. Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right. Bye. bye guys.